Soul Road Trips, of course, is uh, my uh, photography workshops uh, that I've been doing for a dozen years already now and um, planning some new stuff. We're going to be going to Alaska um, coming up in hopefully in August. It's a trip I've done a couple of times and it's just fascinating. Um, and then we're going to be looking at Scotland and uh, Ireland in the next couple of years as well. So keep that in mind, but soulroadtrips.com, that's the site there. But there's also a lot of educational opportunities on there too. I'm teaching a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, things. I've done that with Ellen a few times so she can hopefully vouch for me that we can just do these little Zoom meetings and, and really do some neat stuff uh, in an hour, a couple hours, whatever works. So uh, if you need a little help or a little encouragement, don't hesitate to ask. That's what I'm doing. So tonight I have a topic that is really important to everybody. I'm going to say it's really important to me. I'll speak for myself. But um, for many, I mean, I've been doing this for photography for 40 years, grew up in the business. And for several years here in the early 2000s, I worked for a color lab as a rep. And I would travel the country and <clears throat> help people. What I did was not my job description. I would help people straighten out their hard drive and their computer messes. And, and, and I'm, that's not funny, and I'm not trying to laugh. I don't mean that at all. But what I decided that there's definitely a place for a little bit of organizational direction. And if you think about it, there's not a whole lot of websites or tutorials or anything out there that help us set up our where our files are and how to access them, how to name them, how to set up hard drives and we end up doing that for ourselves. Yeah, there's technical uh, articles out there that you know tell you about how hard drives work and so on and so forth, but there's really not a whole lot that that um, drives us towards creating a, a, a an organizational system uh, for your images that make it easy. I hear stories about people, they, they get to where they don't even want to go out and shoot anymore because they have such a problem with their image not the quality, not what they're shooting, but just the fact of storing, of um, naming them, of trying to find them, that they don't even want to bother go out and shoot anymore. And it's just sad because it, it doesn't have to be that difficult. So this little program, it's only about, uh, about 40 minutes. I'm going to chat with you just about some simple things about hard drives, sizes, naming files, hierarchy of how to store files. Uh, and this I've, this program leads to a lot of questions so I've left plenty of time for that so write them down as you go along we'll let me do my little talk I got a, a PowerPoint presentation and then we can um, jump into your questions because it usually a lot of questions happen from this one so don't hesitate to ask um, so that's kind of what this is about so let me I'm gonna get the screen here and um, jump into um, my PowerPoint and yeah, let's see here. All right. So you can laugh at the name, and that's the whole purpose. But it, hopefully it helps you remember it. What the hell are my images? And that's kind of what it's all about. Again, as I said there, for about six years I was a lab rep. And I spent a lot of time digging into people's computers to help them find where their images were stored. And... I'm not trying to make fun of it, don't get me wrong, it's not that at all. Um, although it is kind of comical at where I found some images, but we won't go into that. That's, an, that's over a few beers and some good stories, good laughs later. But anyways, just the simplicity of how this can be can make your whole experience in creating imagery that much better. Because this is half of it right here. You know, there's this ongoing, I don't call it an argument, but conversation about doing less to an image and so on um, you know to really keep it a true honest photograph and that's I think that's just your point of view as to what you're comfortable with um, but in the digital world if you're especially if you're shooting raw you have to do something to the image in order to make it at its best because the raw obviously captures a whole lot of information your job is to go in with the different softwares and sliders and so on to pull out what you think is the best parts of that image and save it that way and that's just the development of it um, I, I, again it sounds like a topic we've all talked about but it's amazing at how many people it's usually the newer folks who will argue with you on that point again it's not meant to be an argument but it is kind of interesting and people say I want to be a purist I have no idea what that word means so 
this program hopefully will help you in just the simple image filing, if you will, um, the hierarchy of where your stuff is and, and how easy it is to, to find it and name it so that you'll have more fun and more time and actually processing your images and sharing them with the world and going back out and shooting more because this isn't a stumbling block. So that's what this whole program is kind of about here. So we're going to talk about storage. We're going to talk about naming your files and just the hierarchy of how I keep them. Again, this is what works for me. It's not the only way. When I do this program for other groups, there's always folks in there who have a good system that works for them. And I'm not certainly telling you you need to change what you're doing. What I am suggesting is if you are struggling with it, consider this because this is definitely a very simple and straightforward. I kind of use the rule of thumb that anybody who knows a computer should be able to come in and sit down at your computer and find something that simply. It should be that rudimentary that it you don't have to hurt search for it and, and get upset and, and and then also part of that is just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So I'm going to chat about these three areas. So write your questions down as we go along. Storage simply, um, let's start with the, the probably the simplest thing is let's get our images off of our operating system hard drive. The computer has its hard drive that runs the operating system and the applications and my strongest suggestion to you is let's not store images on that drive. Let's go with external drives. You have just so many more options and, and it runs just so much differently that way. So that's where we're going is to suggest uh, different types of external drives for your photography. I even have, matter of fact, on my computers I have nothing on them except operating system and applications. If that goes down, if that drive dies, you can get all that stuff again very easily. You can get the applications, even if you've paid for them. You can set up the operating system again. That's not a problem. So if you lose your images and you don't have them backed up, and I venture to guess half of you has, have experienced that, and that's very sad. I had, I lost, I can tell you stories, way in the beginning when things first started with digital, I lost some images from a huge event that I photographed that included the Commodores and the Spinners and I lost the images. Well, I didn't lose it. The hard drives did. So, it can happen. And once it does, you'll take every precaution to make sure it doesn't happen again. Even if it's just a birthday party of your grandchild, that's just as important. So, we're going to talk to you about how to use external hard drives and how to look at them, how to store them, your images. And let's start with simply by buy the biggest drives you can afford. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy 20 terabit drives right now, but <clears throat> the larger the drive you have, the space you have, the, fat, the, the quicker and the easier the drive is going to work. Now, just by habit, I should say habit, just by the routine of drives, any drive when you get to about 70% full is going to start slowing down. Not horribly, but it just does. So whether you get a 6 terabit or a 14 or a 20, when you get about 75% full, eh, 65, 70%, it's going to start slowing down. Just know that that's, that's a normal thing. So if you're working with a drive that's a 2 terabit drive and you've got 500 uh, megabytes left, it's going to take forever if it even takes your images. Or to pull an image off to work on and put it back, it's just it's painful. So the least, the least expensive part of this whole process nowadays is to have a large hard drive. Now of course we're going towards the you know HDDs is what the um, um, hard drives have been, the, hard, the spinning disc, you know, the little record player for us old timers. And uh, that's been the, the, those are the least expensive ones and they're good, they've been around for a long time. But we're going now towards the solid state drives which of course are still a little pricey, they are coming down but that's where we're gonna go. So don't run out and buy some 20 uh, terabit HDDs and spend you know 600 bucks a piece on them and then all of a sudden the SD, SSDs are going to show up um, so kind of play that game a little bit but again giving yourself some space in storage you know, regardless if it's a, a spinning disk or a solid state disk you're going to be happy that you'll have you know we get if, if it takes five seconds we panic we think it's broken right so um, what we're going to talk about is that and I want to go back a slide here the other thing this is really important is backup extremely important. Again, if you've lost some images, you know what I'm talking about. It hurts. There's a 3-2-1 system that I use, and there's a lot of other systems, but this is simple. So they have three copies of every image. 
in two different locations, two different hard drives, not locations on one drive, two different drives. And one of them stored off-site. I'm going to talk about cloud storage and such here in a moment. Um, but also, back to this, we've got the, the hard drive, the spinning disk, we have the solid state. And you can use individual drives, which I have right now. It's what I have set up. And again, I'm going to show you a couple little uh, uh, charts that will make it it'll just make it that much simpler for you to understand. But there's really a couple ways of doing this. The individual drives, I have a software that's a backup software. And basically, it's got a schedule. And it says, take this drive and back up its contents to this drive every night at 11 o'clock. That's the important thing. If you go into an array drive, which is usually the box that you've seen that has multiple drives in it, um, Drobo and Pegasus have a five drive machine that's a pretty good bet because then you can have um, you know, four drives dedicated to your imagery and a fifth drive to other things, music and videos or you know, whatever documents you want to save. So, and it's usually built into it a RAID system, which is a redundant array of independent disks, but there are backup protocols that go with this. The next slide here shows you, um, this is just three of them that you can use that, in other words, when you save a file, it doesn't just save it and then you have to rewrite over it or or copy it later. It writes it writes it to two disks at one time. And that's ideal because that way you don't even have to think about it. It just keeps that copy for you automatically. And the best part about these, it's all the get one that's called hot swappable. That's what RAID 5 does. So if a drive dies, you can just plug in a brand new one, it picks it right up and, and brings it up to date with everybody else um, in your system. So now here is a little graphic, and this is the documents that I uploaded to the chat, so please feel free to download these. They're just JPEGs. But this is one, this is how my system is set up. Again, this is how I do it. It's not the only way, but this works very well for me. And let me just run through what I've done here. My raw one is just that. It is raw files. All of the jobs, the vacations, the projects, the workshops that I shoot are stored on, are downloaded to raw one. And that's the drive I work from in Lightroom when I edit the files. That's backed up to raw two. So in other words, I have two drives that are identical. They're, right now they're 10 terabit drives. And so I work off of raw, import to raw one back raw two is the backup now when i go to pick an image from a trip to edit and and make my own put my my whole soul into it it then is saved into another drive called my masters again i'll have a little breakdown of this for you so you'll see more what i'm talking about in a little bit but this is a separate drive where i have just my my pieces of art the the hard um, the, the images that I've worked hard on to want to show the world and sell to everybody. So looking at it this way, when the house goes up in flames, Master One is the drive that I go for. Then I'll get the dog um, and so on like that. Um, and Master One also has a backup copy as well. So there's Master Two. So all of my raw files are copied onto two drives and all of my master files are copied on two drives. Now what else I have here, external hard drive one and external hard drive two, I have an extra drive that I take to my safe deposit box. So about every month to two months, when I have new master files I've created, I will download them to, let's say, XHD1. And I'll take that to the bank and pull XHD2 out of the safe deposit box and pop one in there. And then in the next month or two months, when I create more images, I just download those to drive two, take it to the bank and switch them out. Plus I have a store, uh, excuse me, a cloud storage. Now I'm using Backblaze. I used um, uh, Carbonite for a while, which is not a bad system, but they kind of went and changed things. You cannot, at least I should say a year or so ago, you could not upload from an external hard drive. That's right there, that just cut it out for me. It had to be from your interior, in internal drives. You also didn't have a choice. You just had to upload your whole internal drive. So you were uploading, you were taking up space with programs and all of the other crap that you really don't need to back up, the stuff you can replace. So that didn't work for me. So I go to Backblaze and there's several other systems. Uh, of course there's iCloud and so on. 
and it just allows you to, to back up just my raw files and my master files into two folders on that drive and I can access them from anywhere at any time so that to me and it's like I think I'm paying seven ninety five a month maybe it's, it's cheap but man what a great insurance policy that is so that's exactly what this is all about here again there's a copy of this in the chat box that you can download so you'll have this idea of um, you know how I do my masters and I just saw that I misspelled the word gosh darn it <laughs> all right so naming conventions again this uh, it doesn't sound like it should be that big a deal and it's not a big deal but man what I've seen over the years make it simple make it so you can understand it you don't have to describe the whole scene and I've, that's what I've seen many times Sally and, and Jason down by the river with the fishing pole at 3 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon it was sunny and 75 degrees I mean seriously I've seen titles like that in studios and such so you don't have to do that realize that every addition every character you put into a, a, a name adds more um, data to be stored on your hard drive now you don't need to use initials so you will have to guess at what it is but be a little bit descriptive about how you name your files in your folders so that they make sense again the idea is your neighbor who doesn't know the com computer should be able to come in and sit down at your computer and understand your file hierarchy so make sense of the folder names and the file names simplicity honestly simplicity is the easiest thing to do because you know we th this computer thing is is tough enough as it is and if you do something and you walk away and you come back for me it's the next day but if you come back in three months and you don't remember what you did that's just really frustrating and you're not going to want to go out and keep shooting because you don't know what you did so make it that simple and I'm going to show you the hierarchy that I use I only have two levels of storage there's a third level that I do sometimes but just make it that simple and by all means in Lightroom add keywords or whatever software you're using to uh, import your images add the metadata is there but add keywords that make it that much simple simpler for you to find images later so again I use Lightroom to set up and one of the things that I see people doing is they'll take their card plug it into their little card reader download the folder to the desktop and then do some naming and do some culling out and then they go to Lightroom and import it and then they move the folder somewhere else and they have to go back to Lightroom and, and find out where it got moved no <laughs> just no Lightroom is designed to do all of this for you. If you're not doing this, please do. Just open Lightroom, find the folder, and as it export, as it imports into your hard drive, it's going to record it into your catalog, and you don't have to keep going back and forth and moving things or whatever. So put that folder on the hard drive, on your raw hard drive, and there you go. Now, I know a lot of you that will use Lightroom, go to your raw file, pick an image you like, make it all pretty, and save it as a TIFF or JPEG and then store it back into that folder of the originals and that's fine there's nothing wrong with it but again when I get to my hierarchy of folders you'll see why I like my system best I hate searching oh my god I hate having to go through things over and over again to find something so I've, I think I've alleviated that problem so the simple workflow for you should be something like this you download your files into the catalog you price process them in Lightroom export them and, and work on them in Photoshop, enhance them, and if so, some plugins in that you use, and then you save them to that other drive, that master drive, and that's how simple it needs to be. Not knowing where your files can be is extremely frustrating. I mean, you will be looking for another hobby if you keep doing it in the, the toughest way possible. Folders names should be also very simple. I mean, very simple and very easy to identify. I have this created this little pro, this little uh, protocol, and you'll see again in the in the chart here in a moment of how easy it is. I basically, when I import my raw files, basically name the folder the trip. So if I've gone to the somewhere in the fall, I'll, when I go around Colorado, and I let's say in this case I did it in October of 2020, that's exactly how the folder is going to be named. There's some variations, of course, but make it easy on yourself. Now, the one you see where it says wildflowers, is because I do a lot of wildflowers at many different times. I don't want to have to go searching for wildflowers in all kinds of different folders, so I'm just going to name my folder. I went specifically somewhere in July of 
2018 to do wildflowers. At that point, it doesn't really matter where I went. It was about the wildflowers. So I have that folder of that name. Same with cars and trucks. I do. I shoot those all over the country, and you know, obviously, sometimes it's on other trips. So I might have some put away in different categories. So that's just you have to work that out for yourself. But by the most part, if I go somewhere specifically for cars and trucks, I might have a folder just from that trip of cars and trucks. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, one more file. This is file names. Same thing here. Make it easy on yourself. When you're working on your images in Lightroom and you've got some of them done or as few of them, whatever it is, when you've culled out the ones you don't want, you've thrown them away, and that's another thing I'll definitely recommend. If you come across an image that you've just, you messed up, whatever it is, out of focus, um, bad exposure, bad cropping, whatever, it's not usable, that's okay, we all do it. Holy cow, that's why we, that's why we can shoot so many. Throw it away. Okay, everybody repeat with me. Throw it away. There's nothing worse than coming back into a project or a file and, and all of a sudden you see all these ones that you missed the exposure on. And it happens, so it's not a terrible thing. But don't keep them. There's no reason to keep them. Just throw them away. You, you aren't going to ever need to come back. Just throw them away. Everybody repeat with me now. Throw them away. Okay, thank you. So the easy way is to just name your images. I went to Chicago and uh, I just named them this way. It was March of 2019 and it's just one through whatever. That's the easy way to name them. Um, when I take them out of Lightroom and I've selected one that's going to be my next masterpiece, I'll give it a title. I'll give it a name. Cold Creek Falls, Grand Tetons, whatever it might be. That's just as I'm building the image in Lightroom and in Photoshop, I'm creating this connection with that. I'm remembering what happened on the trip and how I felt and, and, and the feelings and emotions I'm putting into the image. So I want to name it something that brings that out every time I see that image. And you'd be surprised at how you do remember the images better, at least for me, that way when I have a unique title to it. So in my folder of all my um, Colorado images, all of them will be named something, not just the trip name, not Chicago or Colorado, you know, 319, number one. Again, gray area there, but do it what works best for you. It just, I think it fuels the creative fire to do that sort of thing. And when you have five images of the same Aspen Grove, um, you know, save them that way. Aspen Grove 1, Aspen Grove 2, that's fine. Because um, you can title them later when you've worked on them and you have an idea of what it is you want them to, to really, what story you're trying to tell. So importing your raw files through the software, like I said before, you're not copying and pasting them into one folder and then cull them out. Just use Lightroom or your other uh, softwares like that to its advantage and do the whole process that way. Make it a system. The point is, do the same thing over and over again every time. Um, you know, using that software to its they've designed these softwares to make it easy for you, so use it that way. Create the folder on your raw hard drive. Remember, your hard drive number one is going to be all your raw files named from the trip. And that's where you're going to save all those guys. Rename the files to correspond with this trip when you open them up and, uh, and, and have them in Lightroom. Now, I've kind of backed off a little bit on that. I shouldn't say backed off. I just sometimes I don't do it. I don't... Personal preference. Maybe it's a day. Um, when I was photographing portraits, I would definitely name the files by the customer's last name. But when I do a trip, like here I've got Uray October 20-1-2 and so on, I'm maybe not necessarily naming all of them uh, in that DNG folder. You know, when I don't name it, I kind of go, why didn't I name them? And when I do, I'm like, what did I do that for? So that's a gray area right there. All right, little hierarchy for you here. So this is looking at, this is my existing software, excuse me, hard drive setup. There's my Mac. I have the two master hard drives and the two raw hard drives. They're identical. The masters are identical. The raws are identical. So in my raw files, excuse me, raw hard drive, I have folders of the trips I was on. Albuquerque, March of 18. Alaska, March of 19. And on down the line. Inside the folder, for example, this particular Alaska trip, I just named them one through whatever. That's the simplest way. I didn't need to have unique names for that because it's just internal. It's just for me to go through. So I kind of let that go. That's fine. 
Now, here's the difference. Well, let me show you one more, and then uh, we'll come back to this one, too. So one other way that seems to be very popular is to drop another folder in here at the second level of the year. A lot of folks like to do that. So in 2015, all the trips that I did will have their own storage folders there, Albuquerque, Alaska, and so on. 2016 and so on and then in that folder the Chicago one here are those raw files and I did name them just one through whatever so that's just adding one more step into it personally I don't do that I do just the let me go backwards here <clears throat> I just do in the main hard drive one level of the name of the trip here's why if I'm going back for a reason to look for a specific image maybe more of a theme and it's Alaska. Guess what? Look at this. All the Alaska folders are together. All the Cuba folders are together. All the Florida folders would be together. I don't have to go and open 15 and look in Alaska. Oh, it's not there. 16 and look in Alaska. Oops, oh, not there. To me, it's just one more step that I'm adding to, um, to just, not to make it harder, but I just want to make it as simple as possible. This way, it's just so much easier to go right into the name of the trip. And if there's something from Alaska, I'll have five, six, ten folders right together. That's a lot simpler for this little brain right here. So moving on, that's the RAWs. <clears throat> In the master, these are your pride and joy. These are the files that you've loved from your trip. You took them through Lightroom, you took them into Photoshop, and now I store them in more of a category kind of a thing. I, I kind of pretty much, well, I don't say I've dropped where they're from, but I've pretty much saved them more as black and white, for example. Any image from any of my trips that I want to do a black and white of, guess where it goes? Black and white. Because that's when I look for images, that's what I might be looking for is a black and white image. I'll go to that folder. As opposed to thinking, well, let's see, I did a black and white in Alaska. I did a black and white in Cleveland. I did a black and white. Now I have to go to every single folder to find black and whites. I think black and white, for me at least, is a big enough category, it's going to have its own area. Same with abstract and so on. Now in my animals, creatures folder, I have broken it down into some different animals. Um, that just makes it a little bit easier to find some things. Um, but again, that's just totally up to you. And in this case, you can see I have the bears all named. That is, again, a quick reminder of what the picture is about. In, um, in the other ones here, I know Death Valley folder, uh, they're all titled, whatever I think the appropriate title was at the time for that particular image. But it will contain images from multiple trips to Death Valley, multiple trips to Florida. The lighthouses category is, is all my favorite lighthouses from wherever I shot of a lighthouse, if it was in Maine, if it was in California, wherever. It's, it's about the lighthouses, so the location is not that important at that point, at least, again, how I use them. And, again, Master 2 will be the exact same uh, file setup. So just quickly on backups and then we'll go into some questions here. <sighs> Backup. <laughs> if you're not, um, I hope it never happens to you, but hard drives fail. Matter of fact, I just ran across, um, I'll have to find this in my craziness tonight to try and get online here. Uh, I was going to share a, um, a, an article with you that they had taken, uh, gosh, somebody did research and there was 20, 30 popular hard drives, and they, the, this, the article was, a, was the fail rate. And you'd be surprised at how many of big name drives and how often they fail. And this, of course, the story goes, well, I didn't back them up. If you do nothing else in your life, have backups of your images, you'll be glad you did. Again, that 321 is just a little system that I learned a long time ago. So I have three copies of each file, at least. So I have three different, well, two different local hard drives, the main hard drive for my um, raw files and the backup. Same with my masters, there's a main and a backup. And then I have one more of those files stored off-site. Again, in my case, I have a fourth copy stored on that drive I put in the safe deposit box. I don't think you need to go that far, but again, I'm trying to make a living doing this, so I can't afford to miss anything out here. Online, there's some great backup sources. Now, I will tell you, as I mentioned before, Carbonite is a good source, but they have changed their rules, again, a year and a half ago, so I'm not sure where they are right now. But you could not back up from an external drive. It had to be your hard drive on your computer, and that right there said no for me. So I use Backblaze. Great system, easy to access. 
Also know that when you, if you haven't used a system like this, Backblaze, it took six weeks or more to back everything up. And of course it depends on your internet connection and so on. But just know that it will take a while. It's not a couple hours or a couple of days. It will take a few days to back things up. So don't panic if it looks like it's standing still and it's been a week. Just be patient. It will take a long time, especially if you are going to back up your raw files, which I have about 150,000 in my catalog. That's why it took close to six weeks. Now, I'd shut the computer off sometimes in there, a couple of trips, so I know that there was that. But what's cool about it is as I turn it back on, it picks it right up. So you're not hurting anything. You're not. It just stops it until you turn it back on. Uh, and schedule these backups daily, too. Uh, it'll be that one day when you think that you're going to be okay. And you'd go and, and um, do some images, and then that's the day your hard drive decides to quit, and you don't have a backup of it. So, don't hesitate to make, you know, your hard drives backup. At least copy it to your local drive. And I have my backup system again for, through Backblaze that runs every night at 11 o'clock. Now, if I'm not home, like I'm on this trip right now, it's just all shut off. Well, I'm not adding anything to the catalog at home on the hard drives there, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I am backing up my external drive that I have with me on this trip, so I'm still making sure that, you know, you go to all the, the, the trouble to go on a trip, the expense, the planning, the fun, all those things to shoot and then have it and lose those images. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's not cool. <laughs> all right, so let me uh, get out of here and come back to your guys. Let's see, stop the sharing. And um, let's just jump into some questions here. If um, I don't know if Ellen, you want to identify some questions, or you, you guys, either you can ask me, or if you want to just turn your mic on, since there's not a lot of us here, whatever works for you. But let's chat. Yeah, if everybody just wants to come back on, uh, so we can uh, we can just kind of have an open forum about yeah. this. Yeah. Um, but I even um, change your change your view to gallery view if 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 you're not on that, um, and just uh, fire away. I have a comment on Backblaze. I used it this summer and it's, it's worked fantastic, but it took me a couple months, as you're saying. Yeah. And Comcast said I was running out of data at the end of month one, and they were going to charge me. Oh really? That's interesting. So I had to, so I had to stop and when I checked on it, it turns out they were waiving that extra cost due to COVID and everybody being at home. So I got by with just running it continually for two and a half months to get everything backed up. Okay, well that's but good. Just be aware there could be a charge for using, going over their data limit. And, and also too, that's a good point Dick, but just also too in the future, once you get past that initial upload, you're only uploading a few images at a time, so you probably will never right. approach your limit again. So um, it'll be just that initial um, plug in of the, of the servers. I've used Backblaze and I like it a lot. I think it's about $5 a month. Yeah, it's not much. It's easy to use, very understandable. Um, I've used some others that do the same thing but they've made them way too complicated to to for their own good so backblaze to me is just really simple i, I think the initial was about two months to back up everything yeah of course it depends on your connection speed and and how things are running in your neighborhood if i would have stayed in my hotel and tried to upload that it would have taken two years so <laughs> Any other thoughts? I have a question. Um, if you, I just, okay, I'm kind of new with all this stuff and I was directing or importing my photos directly into Lightroom. Everything was on my computer. I just started with a MacBook a few months ago. Okay. And so now I'm, I have a mess because I didn't organize anything and I'm in the process of organizing. I got an external hard drive. Um, I'm importing into the internal hard drive and then putting them into Lightroom. 
um, and then putting them back into the external. So my question is, all these photos that I have the raw image on my MacBook, and then I have the edited image on my MacBook, how do I get all of them over to my external hard drive? I'm kind of confused with this. Yeah, that's okay. Um, first thing I'll mention is I do work one-on-one -on -one with people, so if you get to that, don't feel, don't hesitate to ask. Um, okay. It's not really hard, and, and don't let it scare you because if you can easily plug your your external drive into your laptop and literally drag the folder from the laptop over to the external drive, and it'll make a copy. You won't lose anything. It won't throw away anything off the hard drive on your desktop. It'll just make a copy. So that's at least you're getting them over there. Once they're on your external drive, you can go back and then throw away that folder on your um, your laptop. That's really how simple it can be. So for both your RAWs and your and your uh, edited files. Another thing I did forget to mention that I also, by default, Lightroom will save the catalog uh, in the folder on your hard drive of your uh, computer, your internal hard drive. I also move that folder to my external drive, so it gets back. Even though you can do backups, you're just backing up within that folder. So you can have your images off your computer, and you can have all the edits. But if you your computer goes down and your catalog is still on the the uh, computer's hard drive, and you lose that, you've lost all your edits on your pictures. So your catalog, mm -hmm. I keep that on my. Actually, I keep that. To me, that's precious. That's on my my um, my road warrior my uh, um, uh, masters drive so when that gets backed up I'm also backing that up to the external source or the extra drive that I actually put into the uh, safe deposit box also something to keep in mind that and, and really let me just throw this out because this is this gets people in trouble if you all you gotta do is take that folder Christine like you were talking with your images for example and, and move that folder of the uh, catalog to your external drive. It'll copy it over there. Okay. But what you do then is you open that folder and you double click on the uh, catalog itself and when it opens it now creates the path because if you go if you've had it on the computer and you move the new folder to your external hard drive you think you've put it there but then you go back to Lightroom and open the catalog you're opening the, the catalog that's still on your computer and even all the changes are made you're not changing it on that new catalog. So anytime you move a catalog, open the folder, double click on the LR cat, L R C A T, Lightroom catalog. It's dot L R C A T. Double click on that. It'll open the catalog, but it'll also make the connection of where it lives. So you'll be reconnected. Then you can throw it away off your, your computer's hard drive. But it's also then being okay. backed up. Speaking of backups, when you back up, um, okay. if you just open Lightroom I do. A, I got a whole workshop on Lightroom. If you guys are interested too, sometime uh, on, on not just how to use it, but the maintenance of it and such. But when you um, <clears throat> when you back up at the end of a Lightroom session, only back up if you've added and done a lot of changes. If you just open something up to look for something or export something, don't back it up because it's backing up the whole catalog every single time. And if you look up in that look into that backup folder you'll have a copy and a date of every time you back that's it is a compressed file but it's taking up space so my other routine is to go into that folder every once in a while depending on how much you back up and throw away all but the last the most recent two folders just get them off your drive because you're you're taking up a lot of space with it because it's saving the same catalog over and over and over and over and over again so if you've gone for two years and you back up every time you open it you're gonna have a lot of space taken up by those old catalogs so thank you so if you have started off with a different system like for example by year and month and then Below that, you've got the categories of, say, bears and lions or something like that. Right. How do you go about if I've done that for years and how would I go about migrating over to a system like yours? OK, yeah, that's a really good question. I have a client right now who is <laughs> she's almost in a panic because, oh, my God, oh, my old stuff is named wrong. It's OK. It's not going anywhere. I would not suggest you spend the rest of the, the month correcting all the old stuff. Just get to it when you get to it. Create a new system and start doing it forward. 
and then all of a sudden you think, yeah, I could, I got time to do this kind of, uh, um, maybe this plan or or a plan, this folder or so on, and um, you know, just do a little bit at a time. But it's kind of moving forward um, from here with the new system so that it makes sense. And, and ideally, when you get to be comfortable with that, then you might find it easier to go in and and back up your old stuff. Um, and uh, I'm losing power here. Let me find my plug. Oh, did I not bring that? I bet I didn't bring that. <laughs> you guys, what a day. I didn't bring my power cord, so if all of a sudden I disappear, thank God we got the program done. <laughs> yeah. I tell you. Um, so, yeah, so um, there's, I mean, there's a lot that, um, that I say there's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot that's involved in just... Um, the maintenance of where your images are and and all I'm suggesting is that if you just take a minute to I bet it's the wrong plug though. Thanks Gary Because this is a brand new Mac. Yeah Hang on one sec here Oh no, yeah Okay. Probably have to plug it in Where's the plug? Right on the bottom floor. Right oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. There Sorry about that, kids. But after all that's happened this evening, I'm like, God, if I lose power now, <laughs> I quit. I'm going to pick up plumbing. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Anyways, so a lot of what's, what's frustrating is that there's, you know, so many people have put out videos and things on how to do this and how to do that. And, and all I can suggest is you, you look at all these things that you watch and, and pick up what works e best for you, what you grasp, what you understand, and then make that work. But make it consistent. Do it all the time. That's the best thing, especially in the file. However you do it, just be consistent with it so you it's simple and you understand it. There's not a wrong way. Well, I can show you some wrong ways. There's not the one right way. Let's put it that way. It's just... Make it simple. I mean, man, if the KISS theory works anywhere, this is it right here. Because I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with... I, there's been a couple of times I've actually sat down with somebody and looked at their computer and just shook my head and like, I think starting over is the right way to fix this problem. So we don't want you to go there. We don't want you to have to start over. But So moving forward, look at your system. Look at the notes I've given you. See if you can make your whole storage the whole thought press process a little simpler get that rolling and then look backwards and start correcting I should say correcting but start changing the old stuff so don't feel like you have to do it all all tonight in order to get it right it's 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 a system it's an ongoing thing and of course the more you sit down on your computer the easier it'll be too that's the thing I know some of us shoot and then don't get to the computer for a while and so on so any other questions I've got another question about when I'm on the road and I'm using a portable hard drive, external hard drive to do that. Um, I'm going to say don't slap my wrist, but what I typically do is download them, download my images to my internal hard drive on my Mac and then back them up on the external hard drive, the portable hard drive. Um, but I, I sense that there's a better way to do that. Um, I, I, let's not use the word better. Let's say easier because better kind of taints that you're not doing it right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think first of all, the, here's a, here's an issue that happens. We go on a trip. This is, this is what I do. So I go on a trip and I shoot, whether it's one of my workshops or just on a trip like this, just having fun, whatever. And I'm saving them to my my uh, external portable hard drive. I have the. Um, if you guys haven't heard of the Transcend drives, these things are bulletproof. They're military quality, and I can't get it to show up. Um, Transcend two and four uh, gig drives. You, you. They say, I'll say you can drop it from 30 feet, and it won't it won't hurt it. I haven't tested it. I'm not about to, <laughs> but um, they're not the cheapest. This 200. And 40 bucks for a but I mean I travel a lot with it so it works so when I'm on a trip I'll create my 
Lightroom catalog specifically for that particular trip and store it on this drive. Do all my editing along the way, whatever I need to do, make some tips out of it, save them to the same folder. When I get back home, I will do the import from another catalog setup in Lightroom. So my master catalog at home, I turn that on, I go to, I forget where it is, I think it's under the, the first uh, drop down up there, and it's import, not import catalog, but import from another catalog. And then you browse to the catalog you created on the trip, and just click on that, and it'll find it, and it'll find all the images, it gives you thumbnails, and you can verify it, and then you say, where do I want this to go? And it not only moves everything for you to where you want all your stuff stored at home, plus it adds all of the data of changes you made to those images to the existing catalog uh, at home. So you just now have a new um, folder or whatever it is that you keep your images in your existing uh, drive. That way you could, you could literally throw that other Lightroom catalog away on your hard drive and not be confused with it. Um, but that's a real simple way to be able to work on a trip, do some pretty things, and then not lose all that and have it blend in with your other catalog at home. How, however you get it there. Again, think of the, the shortcuts in a sense of how I've set up my system is <clears throat> when I come home from a trip, whether I've saved images to this external drive or I have cards from my camera, the first thing I do is open Lightroom. That's going to be my catalyst. That's going to be my tool to import images to where I want them to be, putting them in the catalog, all those things, all within one. Instead of moving, 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 this is taking care of and putting them all in one way. Again, it's very simple to do. Does that kind of help you, Lori? Yeah, it sure does. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <clears throat> Just it's it's kind of like you think about it in terms of shortcuts. You know, we tend to go from here to here to here to here to here. Just think, oh, I'm, I'm here. I want them to be here. You can do that. You know, it's, it's really that simple. Any other thoughts, comments, bad jokes? I'm up for anything. <laughs> Come on, I'm Kathy, you always have questions for me. <laughs> Jeff, I'm glad you mentioned about cards, because I always say that, too. If you're traveling, if you don't have to reformat your card, if you happen to have a decent supply of cards that that's your third source or your oh, that's third true. yeah that's very true so a lot of times what i'll do is is when i'm traveling i will save and create the the catalog uh in lightroom from that particular trip to um actually a lot of times i'll do it to my desktop on my on my laptop computer and then back it up to the external hard drive and then not not clear out the card. So I have three copies of that. Then when I get back home, I can just plug in whichever I feel like. I may I won't work on both catalogs, but I'll probably use you work on the the external drive. Just plug that in and back it up that way. Then the other part of it too though is to go back and get rid of the catalog on your in your laptop and the hard drive so that you don't think, okay, did I work on it here? Did I because I've done that. You don't throw stuff away and you go work on it and then all of a sudden you get and you oh my God, what do I do? So if you move something from a hard drive to your desktop, go back to the hard drive as part of that same session, throw it away. Just throw it away. Same with the cards. The other, we'll go into that real quick. The best routine that I get into is I have my cards and I plug them in, I download them, I make sure they're all there, they're in the catalog, I'll plug the card in and erase it right there. Now, <clears throat> um, it's it's just it's just the best way to when I go back out in the field and it's been two months and I plug a card into my camera and there's a whole bunch of images there from a trip you go did I download those or did I forget it's a blank card I don't have to worry about it I, that tells me I did so it's again it's those routines that make the whole process that much more fun because I've been out in the field and think gosh I did I download that? And I, I won't. I'll throw the, put the card back in there, and I get home, and sure enough, I forgot that card. I forgot to download it on that trip, and there were some nice images in there. So that's the things we do. So any more questions? I think, um, Jeff, because I this may be the second time I've seen you do this presentation. I think I saw you do it at with the Colorado Photography Learning Group and yeah. 
So it's all making perfect sense. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad. Well, again, like I said in the beginning, this is just how I do it. It's not the way. I mean, you know, you guys have been around. You've looked at videos and things. But the idea is to pick a way that resonates with you and stick with it. And, and you know, change it as you go along and make it your own. But the idea is to do kind of the same thing as you go along because that's what makes it easier and makes it a no-brainer. But uh, the, having said that, don't sit back and assume <laughs> – because I plugged in something and, and plugged it in and was going to erase it. And then I, because I was too busy, I had the TV on and I was talking to somebody and I'm ready to erase this. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second, that's the card I haven't downloaded yet. So, ah. <laughs> the matter of fact, when I was working for the, it was a American Color Imaging, and I would go into these studios, and I, I'll, I'll, I'm saying this is tongue in cheek, it was all the young, um, soccer mom photographers, I don't mean this as an insult, but all the young moms who, they had the kids and they were babysitting the neighbor's kids, they had nothing else to do, so they'd pick up a camera and started shooting and they were doing you know, all the kids' portraits. And that's all, that's all fine and dandy. But I'd go into their homes to help them out and they'd be sitting at the kitchen table with the TV going, the kids' radio going, five kids running around screaming and they're all asking her first, can I have a fudge stickle? Can I have a, yeah. And then to do something this serious with your images, I'd screw it up every time. So I usually have the music on very low. And now that I live alone, it's easy to do this. I don't mess it up. But man, somebody gets into conversation with me, I'm thinking, okay, what did I do now? So, you know, you know yourself. If you have those issues, do it in a way. But don't be afraid to write it down, too, because, you know, sometimes weeks go by before you do it over and over again. And this is just one of those things that we tend to forget. So don't hesitate to make some notes, have yourself a little cheat sheet. And put my phone number by your computer. I'm happy to help. <laughs> by the way, I forgot to mention, um, congratulations to Jeff. He got the uh, Grand Imaging Award second place in, in his category. Was it the uh, illustrator? It was actually category? Yeah, commercial illustrator. Commercial. Yeah. Commercial uh, category. It was amazing. I mean, this is an international competition that... Uh, Jeff was essentially the best of the best of the best. <laughs> Thank you for getting in it, and it was amazing. And then plus your um, uh, diamond diamond photographer of the year. So so we got we got a great example of of what it means to be a photographer here. So thank you, Jeff. Well, thank you very much. I have to say, Colorado did pretty well. Some other several other photographers um, did well in this competition, international competition. I mean, there's. 5,500 images entered in competition, and we had five or six of us from Colorado that did pretty well in many categories. So that was kind of fun to share that with some good friends. So by all means, thank you for that mention. Absolutely. No, it was it was amazing to see so much, uh, so so many incredible photographs. Um, and by the way, that was uh, through the Professional Photographers of America. And uh, last week was their conference and it was just so full of information. If anybody ever wants to know about, uh, it's called Imaging USA, then uh, just ask me or ask Jeff um, and uh, got some great stories about um, just all the crazy, amazing photography that's going on, all the new ideas, all the experts that, that have things to share. It's, it's, yeah. it's a really cool experience. This course was the first time we've done it all online, and it was tremendously successful. Um, that was a cool thing. I think it's going to be – it'll be exciting to get back this year with our friends and see them – well, next January to see them in person. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. But uh, that, and then we have the uh, the Professional Photographers of Colorado is a group that – ppcolorado.com that we have uh, – that's near and dear to my heart. Um Again, it's kind of the PPA level up at the state. Lots of great programming, uh, and some of you—I um, don't know if you get. There's also the uh, the Guild of Colorado Springs has a great group. So just several, um, very informative, very fun. Because I think to me, half of the, as you guys I'm sure will agree, half of the groups, the fun is getting together and, and you know being in person and sharing. I mean, this is a hard thing here. Um, and that's what's been good over the years. And I've made, I've got lifelong friends that maybe I see once a year, but it's because of that international convention that we have. 
that does that. And the, yeah, the talent, the, the educational opportunities, oh my gosh, it's just unbelievable at, at all kinds of levels uh, and, and topics too. So if you want to learn how to shoot weddings, if you want to learn how to do drones, um, it's all there and everything in between. So it's been fun. And that's all kind of all I've done in my life is I grew up in the business and just turn around and want to share what I've learned from other photographers with my own little twist on things. So um, that's all we're doing is just paying it forward. So I'm glad you guys took the time tonight to sit down and listen in and, and feel free. I did drop my um, couple of websites. Um, in uh, Actually, if you want if you have any questions, feel free to uh, the soul road trips.com website just put JJ at you'll get me that way if you have any questions about anything happy to happy to chat with you so that's great well thank you so much Jeff and thank you all for for listening and and uh, I'm sure we all got a lot to think about now so I hope so so it's all don't, good. And, and, and don't panic if you sit down and look at your computer go that's not what he said don't panic it's okay <laughs> we'll work it out <laughs> it's all good okay well well thank you everybody and hopefully we'll see you uh march uh, february 10th for um i think that was the 10th for um andy long's presentation second uh wednesday of of uh february so thank you all and um thank you, thank you jeff and i'm gonna have this uh, recording posted on the uh uh website uh, within a few days so you if you want to cool. go back and figure any of this out it's uh it's going to be up there good thanks for that thank you again jeff that was fantastic very welcome yeah, thank, you, thank you jeff thanks everybody thank you